Today, we will talk about the capital adequacy ratio, CR, and how it measures a bank's financial cushion to absorb losses and prevent insolvency. The capital adequacy ratio, or CR, measures how well a bank can meet its financial obligations and prevent insolvency. It compares a bank's capital to its risk-weighted assets and is used by regulators to determine a bank's risk of failure. This ratio is essential for protecting depositors and promoting the stability of financial systems. The CR is calculated by dividing a bank's capital by its risk-weighted assets. The minimum requirement for the CR is 8% under Basel II and 10.5% under Basel III, which includes a 2.5% conservation buffer. This minimum ratio ensures that banks have enough cushion to absorb losses and protect depositors' funds. The two types of capital, Tier 1 and Tier 2, are added together and divided by the risk-weighted assets to calculate a bank's capital adequacy ratio. Tier 1 capital, also known as core capital, consists of equity capital, ordinary share capital, intangible assets, and audited revenue reserves. It is the capital that is permanently available to absorb and cushion losses suffered by a bank without requiring it to stop operating. Tier 2 capital includes unaudited retained earnings, unaudited reserves, and general loss reserves. It provides a lesser degree of protection to depositors and creditors and is used when a bank loses all its Tier 1 capital. Risk-weighted assets are used to determine the minimum amount of capital that banks must hold to reduce the risk of insolvency. The capital requirement is based on a risk assessment for each type of bank asset. Both on-balance sheet and off-balance sheet credit exposures are considered when calculating risk-weighted assets. The capital adequacy ratio is calculated using the following formula, CR equals Tier 1 capital plus Tier 2 capital divided by risk-weighted assets. This formula provides a quick idea of whether a bank has enough funds to cover losses and remain solvent under difficult financial circumstances. For example, if Acme Bank has $20 million in Tier 1 capital and $5 million in Tier 2 capital, with loans calculated at $65 million, its capital adequacy ratio would be 38%. This means that Acme Bank should be able to weather financial downturns and losses associated with its loans, making it less likely to become insolvent. Both the capital adequacy ratio and the solvency ratio evaluate a bank's ability to meet financial obligations. The capital adequacy ratio measures the bank's ability to overcome financial losses related to loans, while the solvency ratio measures whether a company has enough available cash to meet its debt obligations. The Tier 1 Leverage Ratio compares a bank's core capital with its total assets. A higher leverage ratio indicates that a bank can withstand negative shocks to its balance sheet. It is related to the capital adequacy ratio as a measure of a bank's financial strength. The minimum CR is 8% under Basel II and 10.5% under Basel III, including a 2.5% conservation buffer. These minimums ensure that banks have enough funds to handle losses and prevent insolvency. The purpose of the capital adequacy ratio is to ensure that banks have enough funds available to handle a reasonable amount of losses and prevent insolvency. It is an essential measure to protect depositors' funds and promote the stability of financial systems. In summary, the capital adequacy ratio is a vital measure to ensure that banks have enough funds to absorb losses and remain solvent under difficult financial circumstances. The minimum CRs under Basel II and Basel III are 8% and 10.5%, respectively. A higher CR indicates that a bank is better able to meet its financial obligations during financial stress. Here are four key takeaways. 1. CR measures a bank's financial cushion to absorb losses and prevent insolvency. 2. CR is used by regulators to assess capital adequacy for banks and run stress tests. 3. Both Tier 1 and Tier 2 capital are essential components in measuring CR.
4. The downside of using CAR is that it does not account for the risk of a potential run on the bank or a financial crisis. Hope this would help. Thanks for watching.